Long John was a freak, but he had it all, and he had it in a big way. When he kicked, he looked like he was 30 feet in the air. He would kick and extend so hard. If you don't do something so precise and correct, he would jerk you down. J.W. Harris rode him at Springfield, Missouri one time that was uh, one of those rides that we used in the judging seminars, teaching judges, because this is something that, that doesn't come along in every ride. He won his world title. Uh, Fabiano had him. He was tough to get on the ground, especially if they went left, and Long John was going left. I think he marked him something over 47 that day. I do believe Long John is your world wow. champion bucking bull. I got on him one time, and my little 18-year-old self was not ready for that bull then. He was huge, that bull. He'd come in the chute, and he took up all the chute, and he was so tall, too. I was pretty confident going in. I was not very confident after. That bull took every ounce of confidence I had and just, it, he slammed it in the dirt like he did me. That bull was saying, you ain't, you ain't ready for me, kid. When he grew up and grew into his frame, he was 1,900 pounds and just a big freak, just big pretty sucker that would run you over. He, he was just a really neat bull to watch. Hammer time goes back to before the PBR. And so he was there when we started. And he was one of the best bulls when we started. He lasted several years. He, he had a long career. He did the same thing every time. He'd jump in the air and spin to the left. And it took, I think, five years before anybody got him rode. Big and strong, like a lot of the other ones on this list. And every time I got on him, I thought, boy, next time I got it, I'd figure it out. I never did figure it out. That, that one kind of bothers me too, though. I never got by him. But um, Owen Washburn uh, rode him, you know, for an $80,000 Mossy Oak shootout. I, I remember everybody climbing up on the chutes to watch. And But when you seen that matchup, he's like, you know what? This, this is the guy that has a legitimate shot at strapping him. And he did. And then he drew him in the championship round the next night. He rode him again. He's doing it, but so is Owen Washburn. He's going to ride it two nights in a row. The bull that nobody can ride. He was just cool, and he looked like he'd be the one you wanted, but he just kept bucking them off for all of those years. He never failed, and that's hammer time. Big Bucks was a cool little bull. He was a smaller bull, and he just seemed like he came from nowhere. He had a good record, and I saw him one time, so I brought him to the World Finals, and all of a sudden, Justin McBride draws him, and we got to see how tough he really was. I got on him in 2005 at the World Finals. This would be historic. And I couldn't ride him out of the chute. No dice, and he gets skewered by the horns over the handlebars. Down goes McBride. That, that, should be, <laughs> that should be pretty embarrassing to say, but it's the truth. I could not ride him out of the chute. He had me on his head by the time he turned out of the chute. My hand was still on the rope, but he was bouncing me off of his head. No question about it. This is the bull of the year. And if they bucked Justin McBride off, they turned some heads, and that's when everybody started noticing big bucks. I seen that bull buck so hard that he would hit them bull riders in the back because he'd kick so high. His back would hit riders in between the shoulder blades and just knock them over his head. And he's just a little bull, and he's turning back and spinning when he's doing it. Another one of those really explosive, uh, small stature type bulls um, just brought it. He's one of those that you always look to possibly get on because of his intensity and because of his, his follow through. He was just, what a great bucking bull. Mickey Mouse was a, whew, he was a super, super rank bull, and he wasn't around very long at all, and he was one of those that was gonna be a, a legend. He was always kind of working at a world tire, kind of in the hunt or, you know, in, in the conversation, but just never got quite got there. He could do some freaky stuff, and he gave guys a whole bunch of trouble. I really didn't, didn't care much for that summer, really. Wow, 
Chase Outlaw is going to remember that one. He ended about three of my buddies' careers. He, he was a bucker, and he would he was dirty. He would either run you off on the gate or hip himself, whip guys over their head, and just wreck them out. Oh, boy, Shane Proctor in trouble. Nick E. Mouse will extend that streak to 40 consecutive buck-offs. Oh, he's a big bull. He's, I mean, he's definitely like a brand of ball face bull. <laughs> but he was a great, uh, a great bull. Um, again, something that you could be a lot of points on, but the fans were endeared to him. I think, I think some little old lady owned him, and it's like the only bull she ever had. And boy, was she proud of him, and, and so was I. Marlene Henry, that was her pet, and he was just one that was just so incredibly strong. He was just one of the really tough ones to ride, and there wasn't much room for error. I mean, but when he would come out clean, he would buck, and it, it'd be spectacular. You can't ask one to buck any harder than that. You know, he was one of those that you were just so thrilled to watch because you felt like you were seeing rarefied air when you saw him. Smooth operator. You know, these bulls, are, you know, we talk about these kind of bulls. These are special athlete bulls. These are, you're talking like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson type material. They're on a whole new level. Every time he goes, you're liable to see the rankest trip ever. He was kind of the total package. He was big, strong, fast, athletic. If you went to an event, he's definitely one of those ones that stood out like a star. I'm wondering if that bull's gonna belong in a world championship. He won every event that could be won in the ABBI. He was the world champion bucking bull, I believe, in the ABBIs. This bull bucked so hard when he was young. When he was a five-year-old, I thought, I never seen anything buck like that. Only one and a half seconds. And then, bam, this bull's on tour every weekend. He's weighing 1,600 pounds, and he's bucking off the best bull riders in the world. To buck as hard as he did his whole career, just an incredible athlete. Whenever he won his last world title, he was a 10-year-old bucking bull. People always talk about the, the longevity of bucking bulls, and you know, Smooth Operator's the, you know, the Cal Ripken Jr. of bucking bulls. I mean, he didn't win it until he was 10 years old, when most of the bucking bulls' prime is four, five, six-year-old years. He outlasted them all. Whenever I hear Smooth Operator's name, I, I think of Cooper Davis on him. Yeah, Cooper on Smooth Operator. In my mind, that's the best boy I'd ever made in PBR. That ride, I think, for me, was one of the biggest ones I ever watched, like, in person. And I'm like, man, this ride deserves 98 points for sure. He was 93 and some change on him and should have been every bit of more than that. Uh, pretty much could have handed him the clipboard and let him mark himself. That was a really big fight between those two. That was just two great athletes going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I've never been on a bull that bucked that hard. Felt like I was trying so hard to get to the next jump and managed to stay in the middle. It's like dropping a 2,000 pound weight and trying to hold on to it. You know, he was he was so big and so strong, but he, it seemed like he was dropping out of the sky and there was never an end to it. He was special. He was good from the day he was started bucking as a two-year-old. Well, there ain't a lot of two-time world champion bucking bulls. <laughs>